Recently, one of my friends mentioned that they loved watching Wipeout, and I couldn't help but ask. Have you ever heard of MXC? What are these people running from? They're not. They're running to the world's toughest competition in town, MXC, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Explaining MXC to someone is like trying to explain a fever dream. It has a lot to unpack, and none of it really seems like it fits together. If you start at the bottom, it's a game show, a Japanese game show in fact, called Takeshi's Castle, dubbed over by a group of improv comedians from famed LA improv group The Groundlings. The premise of each episode pits two teams versus each other in a competition to score more points, done by completing three or more potentially painful, absolutely absurd challenges. The challenges consistently lead to some of the most brutal things that you can see on a television game show, and some absolutely incredible victories when things actually manage to work out. Often, the challenges are just simple ways of spicing up the classic get to the other side, but sometimes there's some really fun challenges that are pretty creative or even just a bit silly. Some obstacles are bigger than others though, and the violence of some of the impacts really makes you wince a bit. If you think MXC reminds you a lot of Wipeout, you're not alone. The Tokyo Broadcasting Company, who owns the rights to Takeshi's Castle, actually sued the creators of Wipeout, eventually settling out of court. MXC is hosted by Kenny Blankenship and Vic Romano, who both run skits together and commentate the competition. Vic Romano spoofs Takeshi Kitano, who you might be familiar with as he's the main villain in Battle Royale. <laughs> The movie we can all thank for such wonderful things like The Hunger Games and Fortnite. Kenny and Vic are just the tip of the iceberg, as each episode introduces new characters as well as some recurring ones. There's Captain Tennille, the self-absorbed field marshal who kind of welcomes each episode by speaking with contestants from both teams. Who thinks James Bond is a Machiavellian misogynist pretending to protect God and country while serving his purring desires? Show of hands? No! Well, you're absolutely wrong! And Guy LaDouche. The pervy field reporter, whose personality is almost entirely based on sexual assault. I skimmed my knee, I hit my chest. Oh, you hit your chest, let Ow. me check the shirt now, swollen. The episode's theme, though, is where the show is really able to deliver most on its humor, using whatever two teams are competing that week to spice things up into their player introductions and just general commentary as a whole. Oh, and here's Glenn Fromm. He's inventor of the Sierra Club, the humane fur-covered mallet used to bludgeon baby seals. No, no. I prefer the ping sound of an aluminum bat myself. Right you are, Cannon. Oh! Oh, he is down, and oh, he pinged himself against the bowl. The show started off as kind of a bigger mockery of pop culture and, you know, famous celebrities, things like that. But after the first season, the executives at Spike told them to really ratchet up the sexual innuendos and lean into that side of things. Would you be willing to donate a piece of your uniform for charity? Oh. We're auctioning off on eBay. Oh, sure, but I'm not wearing much. <laughs> oh, it's all right. We're only shooting from the waist up. Uh. Jerry, pan down. Uh. Uh, 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 put put uh. it in my helmet. Uh, uh, here. Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 <laughs> and that's part of the problem with the show. It aired on Spike TV in 2003 to 2007, and it really shows. Spike had a very specific target demographic in mind for its network as a whole, and it definitely catered to middle school sophomoric humor. Can you fart so hard your balls explode? It's hard to say that this is one of my favorite shows when I go back and rewatch and see stuff like this. Almost as what? What? Oh, bastard. It's at best distasteful and at worst homophobic, misogynistic. Islamophobic, the whole gambit. There is some solace though that no one is safe from the show's mockery, even you, the viewer. Got it, chubby. Got it, blowhole. Got it, sports bra. Hey, Sparky, put the seat down. The show's intense targeting of young testosterone males, though, is a big reason why it has such a shelf life, and it's still being watched today. Rewatching MXC for this video has made me think a lot about how I feel about this show. I mean, as a kid, I absolutely loved watching MXC and Pros vs. Joes, which also on Spike TV, and I'll gladly make a video about if this video gets to 500 likes. So go down, leave a like if you've been watching and liking it so far. It's also a little bit problematic. I mean, there's definitely things in the show that are creepy, homophobic, and just in general make me feel a little bit uncomfortable saying it's one of my favorite shows after going back and rewatching it. But with that being said, it's also a little hard to know how much of it's ton in cheek. I mean, it's done by improv comedians in Los Angeles that are surely doing this because executives at Spike TV want them to push this sort of stuff. There's times where it feels like it's just unabashed pandering to dude bros who call things gay, 
Whereas other times it feels a bit more like South Park where they're pointing out how ridiculous something is by really going the opposite direction and making you think, oh God, I don't know if I agree with that. It's definitely a strange juxtaposition and it's something that I feel like I need to qualify the show with before telling people to watch it because it is funny and it is enjoyable and ultimately you can look at it as something from the early 2000s that couldn't exist today but appreciate it for what it is and that it exists and that hopefully we've changed a bit since then. So ultimately, if you can recognize MXC's shortcomings as the result of what was acceptable in a different era, feels weird to say that early 2003 was a different era, but I think we can actually all agree on that. There's plenty of enjoyment to get out of watching the show. The absurdity of the challenges, the brutality of the falls, the nostalgia of the graphics, the absurdity of the underlying Takeshi's Castle footage, which in itself could probably be its whole series of videos. Each time I hear the theme song, it's like I'm transported back down a nostalgia rabbit hole to my childhood, sitting on the couch with a pack of Cool Ranch Doritos, some Altoid Sours, and just watching TV after school. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe, give the video a like, share it with your friends, it really helps. If I've convinced you to watch the show, there's the link in the description for the only MXC Twitch channel. You can find it on Amazon Prime as well if you want to watch it in order, specific episodes, stuff like that, although I promise it really doesn't matter. You're not going to miss anything. And as you can tell, I moved. So I'm not fully unpacked yet. I've still got to get some stuff set up, but I'm hoping to do some more videos here, some more Twitch streams, things like that. So look forward to that. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Can you fart so hard your balls explode?